Hello, in this SFML tutorial, we are going to be extending our knowledge of collision detection. We have done bounding box collision detection, which essentially just checks if the the, the smallest box that can fit around each image collides. And we've done circle collision detection, which is a slightly more accurate. You won't always use circle de collision detection. It is fantastic for circles, obviously. And it's also very good for objects that are pretty circular and you mainly just want the collision in the center of a, if you've got a few little bits and pieces coming off from the image, especially when it's fast moving objects, maybe on some sort of shoot mob game, the circle collision is very, very popular. To use pixel perfect collision, you, you can either implement it yourself or you can do what we're gonna do is use a pre-made library, or exactly just two files, and it works fantastically. So what you wanna do, you can either get, as you can see, I have two files right here, collision.h and collision.cpp already added. This is something that I've got from the SFML wiki page. There will be a link to this in the description, so feel free to get it from here, or you can just get it from our GitHub page, which is already all set up in the actual folder that you need for this particular tutorial, and there'll be a link to that. You can get it from either one. I definitely recommend checking out the SFML wiki, because there is a ton of documentation here for a variety of things this collision code also uh, beyond pixel perfect collision it also has its own circle and bounding box collision as well check it out check out each one and compare it to the one built into sfml that's the best way of finding which one works for you so let's go over exactly what is pixel perfect collision detection so we've got this little image right here i wanted to look at it so we got imagine these are two sprites sprite a and sprite b and the the image themselves have collided they have overlapped they've intersected but that's the amount that has intersected would you consider the two sprites aka the two circles to have collided generally speaking if you couldn't see any of these black lines essentially this box around it you would say no it hasn't collided because it's not touching but the images are touching and that's the flaw with bounding box it doesn't account for alpha it doesn't care what color a pixel is all it cares is has the actual box that surrounds each sprite intersected if so it's a collision it's the simplest form of collision detection and it's great because it requires the least amount of processing power Pixel perfect collision detection is pretty heavy on your processor. So only do it if you absolutely have to. Most of the time you can get away with bounding box and some form of circle collision detection. Obviously in this example, circle collision would have been fine because they are circles. But let's open up another example. There'll be links to these images in the description as well. So we've got these two images. So the first one, we have the bounding boxes have intersected. Again, these aren't circles now. You probably might be able to get away with doing this on circle collision. This, no, definitely no. So you would need some form of either bounding box or pixel perfect or something else. Something that is a little more accurate. As you can see, the bounding boxes have intersected. They've overlapped. But the actual character and what looks like some sort of flame have not collided. So even though bounding box would say collision has occurred, realistically when you look at it, collision hasn't occurred. Whereas with this one, as you can see, it is saying real collision because it has collided just right there. And the beauty of using pixel perfect collision detection, this little point here, if let's say it was rotated and it was just touching this little bit here, it'll still work. You wouldn't have to think, oh, is it going to mess up because it's overlapping, but it's not colliding. It is pixel perfect, hence the name, pixel perfect collision detection. But now we know the overall theory of pixel perfect collision detection. Let's go and, well, implement it. Like I said, you wanna get the this code and put it into a collision header. 
I've put it into a .hpp, even though it says .h, you can put it in either, and you wanna get this and put it into a CPP file as well. Just add that to your project, however you need to, whether it's Xcode, you can just drag it, or you can do something like file, add files to the Visual Studio. I'm sure by now you know how to add files, classes, create classes, in your project if you need some help with that feel free to post them put them in post any queries regarding this on our educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk there'll be a link in the description so feel free to check that out so yeah once we've done that the actual grunt work is handled in here hence why the code will actually be extremely simple so if we scroll down so after as you can see we allow for movement Obviously, there is no collision yet. Now let's add the collision. The collision is actually extremely simple. All you have to do is if collision, so this is a namespace, and then the method for checking pixel perfect is pixel perfect. It takes two parameters, the first being one of the sprites. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm gonna put crash. Bandicoot and the next one is going to be the Aku Aku sprite. And now we can just say if this is true, then we can not echo or better do some PHP code. STDC out. This will say collision. STD and line. Else stdc out not count I do not want to count anything no collision now let's just put an end line here so it's just easier to read and that's it <laughs> once you've added the collision include oh, that's the other thing that you need to do i already had it i'm sure you know how to do it as so a hash include the pre-processor include directive and the files for collision.hpp once you've done that so first of all include it and then check for collision that is it so just check for it where you would usually update the game now let's run it and see what we get by default it says no collision because we haven't actually collided and now let's move to our object see as you can see even though the two images are overlapping in terms of bounding box there is a gap here this is alpha so collision hasn't occurred so if we get a little closer even then still hasn't occurred and only now when we have collided at the top here because there was a bit of white on the Aku Aku texture. Now I want to show you something really darn cool. As you can see, it allows for fine movement like this as well. So it's just Crash Bandicoot's left foot is placed in between these two little flare things and it's not collided in terms of pixel perfect whereas we can move it down slightly it has now collided on the left hand side and not on the right hand side but on the left hand side i can show you some more but i think you get the picture of pixel perfect collision detection as you can see it's still saying collision because it has collided and that's it that is really it just one last thing i want to show you doing it this way is like i said pixel perfect is very heavy on the processing anyway but if you do want to do pixel perfect running the method like this using the regular sfml built-in load from file for the texture in terms of the loading is even more inefficient luckily this piece of code that is available on the sfml wiki provides a method called create texture and bit mask so this allows you to load a file into a texture and this is a lot faster than the method that you would usually use so let's just update it so we have a more efficient 
application. So let's just scroll up and I'll get rid of this. And what we want, what we want to do is collision. We're not assigning this to anything because we're going to pass in the texture as a reference. So collision, create texture and bit mask. And the texture is well just crush texture. So this is just being passed in as a reference. And here you just simply pass in the file you're trying to load the normal way, aka the exact file path. We need to do something very similar for the other texture as well. So just copy that, paste it here, and we're gonna change the texture and we are going to change the image that we are loading in. And I need to get rid of these two lines, get rid of these two, run this. The Overall end result in terms of the collision will be no different. This is just to confirm that it has successfully loaded the text, which it has. And as we can do, we can just confirm that the collision is working normally as well. So that is it, really. It's that simple to implement pixel perfect collision detection. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link in the description. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. Also, there will be a link to the GitHub page in the description. So feel free to check out the code from this video and every video in this series. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.